We sit here with our eyes closed, trying to gather our attention inside to be with the breath. Thinking of the breath as a whole body process, the energy flowing through the, the nerves and the muscles that allows the air to come in, the air to go out, the oxygen exchange that helps keep us alive. And this can be very nourishing. The trick is, how do you do this when you're not sitting here with your eyes closed? You try to maintain some sense of being in the body. Don't let your attention flood out your eyes and your ears. Or as John Lee says, don't let it leak out of your eyes and ears, nose, tongue, thoughts of past, thoughts of future. Because if you do, you feel depleted inside. You feel a sense, of, a sense of lack, a sense of hunger. And that makes you want to get more things out of your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, thoughts. But they're never big enough. It's another image that John Lee has that there. Our eyes are way big and the sights seem to be very small and there's never enough of them. So we just keep stuffing them in, stuffing them in. Same with sounds and the other sensory impressions. And it destroys our concentration. And it's hard to tell which gets destroyed first, whether the concentration is destroyed first, whether well, hunger comes. What you've got to learn how to do is combine your meditation with restraint of the senses. The restraint of the senses works when you have a good sense of being mindful of the body. This can either be mindful of the breath as a source of nourishment, you can be mindful of the 32 parts of the body, especially when you're looking at beautiful bodies outside. You remind yourself, well, what's, behind, what's beneath the skin? What's beneath all the, the coverings? Same thing as what's in your body. But whichever form of mindfulness immersed in the body you use, you've got to have that as your foundation post. That's the Buddha's image. It says our mind is like six different kinds of animals, and they all go off in their different directions. If you were to tie them all to a leash, but there was no post to tie the leashes to, then the animals would just get pulled in the direction of whichever animal happened to be the strongest. If you have a crocodile and it's strong, it's going to pull all the other animals down into the water. Many of them will drown. If the bird is strongest, it's going to pull all the other animals up, and again, many of them will starve. What you've got to do is find a good post, and this is what mindfulness of the body is. So you have a sense of nourishment. This is where the breath is especially helpful. It gives you a sense of nourishment, a sense of well-being inside, a sense of energy that you can build up inside. That's what the rapture is for, the refreshment is for. And then you're careful as you go through the world to maintain that sense of rapture and refreshment, having it fill the body. Don't let that energy go leaking out your senses. And this doesn't mean you don't look at things outside. Simply that your eyes and ears are not so big that they have to keep gobbling down sights and smells and whatever. You just notice what needs to be noticed. And don't go, go trying to stuff a lot more in than is really needed. If you can maintain this sense of fullness inside, without letting it leak out. Then the sense of being centered gets maintained. The sense of being nourished gets maintained. And you can deal with the world without being so hungry for all these things. This is one of the ways in which you protect yourself. You protect your, your karma. You protect your concentration. It's 
So try to develop the sense of well-being inside and learn how to carry it around. Another image the Buddha gives is of a bowl of oil balanced on your head. That sense of fullness. You don't want it to spill. Let it stay balanced inside. So working with the energy in the body is not just a, a way of resting from time to time, but it's your nourishment, and you can maintain that nourishment as you go through the day. Too many people learn skills on the meditation cushion, and then they just leave them there. You've got to realize that you carry these things through. You're learning these things because you need them throughout the day. When you wake up, you want to get in touch with your breath. First thing, you think of the breath energy being washed through the body. Before you go to sleep, this should be the last thing you're thinking about is getting centered inside, getting nourished inside, that way you're not so hungry for things outside. I mean, people's addictions and come from the sense of a lack inside. And they know that no matter how much they stuff in from the outside, it's not going to be enough. But they can't stop because they let, let everything leak out through their eyes and ears and nose and tongue and body and mind. And so they just keep stuffing things right in, like the coyotes around here. If you ever notice their scat, you notice when there's slim pickings in terms of the food available to them, to them they'll eat anything. I've seen coyote scat that has plastic rope in it. Didn't provide any nourishment at all. It gave the coyote something to chew on, something to swallow, but there was no nourishment there. And that's what it, the way it is with the sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations. They don't give you that much nourishment. They're like junk food. They're salty and with some fat and bad for you, but they go away very quickly. There's not much left. And John Swatt used to like to ask, when the pleasures you had last week, where are they now? They're gone. And they go as you try to gobble them down. And because they don't provide any satisfaction, you try gobbling more down, more down. And you end up developing a lot of bad habits in the mind. So work on developing the sense of fullness with the breath. The word bitti can be translated as rapture, refreshment. But John Lee would emphasize again and again the sense of fullness. You might want to start with your hands. Just relax all the little muscles and connective tissues in your hands. And let them stay relaxed as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Don't let them tense up even the least little bit with the in-breath. And as you stick with that for a while, there's, there'll be a sense of fullness in the hands. You can allow that sense to start seeping up your arms, the end of the torso. Then start with your feet and work, have it work up your legs. There may even be a sense of floating here as the, the fullness gets really intense. In the beginning it's not going to be all that intense, but you give it some space, you give it some time, and there will be a sense of nourishment. And then you want to be able to carry that into the day as you get up from your meditation. And don't let it go leaking out outside. Because as I, said, as I said, if you let it leak out, then the eyes get bigger and bigger from being worn away with the, the erosion. Your ears get bigger. And inside gets empty. And all you can think of is how much you want to stuff things in from outside. So learn to develop this sense of inner nourishment and learn how to protect it. 
that way your eyes and ears will be just the right size. Enough to handle with whatever's going on in the world. But without a lot of sense of hunger. Because of course when you're hungry you start acting like a vacuum cleaner, sucking everything in. And, you know, mainly vacuum cleaners suck in the dirt. And if you stuffed your st stomach full of the stuff that's in a vacuum cleaner bag, you got sick. And that's why the mind gets sick. from lack of restraint of the senses. So remember that these two things go together, the concentration you're trying to develop and restraint of the senses. The concentration gives restraint of the senses a foundation, and the restraint of the senses gives protection for the concentration. When they work together, the mind will be healthy. That's the kind of health, that's the kind of strength we're working for.